Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing, probably in my estimation, the best novelization of the Robin Hood story in the world, and that is The Lady of the Forest by Jennifer Robertson. You know, we always start with the covers. You know, I've got this cover here, my hardback copy. I've got this little paperback here that I read to. Same artist, did both. And that artist was, I don't know, usually I look this up before I start. Yvonne Gilbert. Yvonne Gilbert was the artist that painted this painting. It's a very good painting. I know that Yvonne Gilbert has done a lot of illustrations for fantasy novels, especially in the 80s and 90s. It's got a nice little style here. I think the cover is pretty good. Now, I have met Miss Jennifer Robertson several times. The only time, one of the, the only time I had a book with me that she could sign was this Golden Key. You know, she wrote this in conjunction with Melanie Ron and Kate Elliott. So the only book I have signed by Jennifer is the Golden Key. But I got it signed by all three authors, so that's pretty dope. The rest of my Jennifer Robertson collection of books is right here. We've got her Chase Lee series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. And then we've got her Sundancer series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. Now, you might notice that I've got this, uh, these DVDs here of Robin of Sherwood. You remember the old uh, uh, Showtime BBC series Robin of Sherwood um, starring Michael Prade and Judy Trott and all those guys? Man, this, this book and this, I mean, these are my two favorite Robin Hood things on the planet. And by God, they're pretty similar. They're pretty similar in tone. They're pretty similar in storytelling. I really dig them both. So if you liked this old BBC series here, Robin of Sherwood, you're going to love this book because, uh, oh, just, just as this pays homage to all of the Robin Hood legends and all of the pagan things that were going on back in the medieval days during the when Robin Hood supposedly lived, same here, same here. She gives all the flavor of that. Not only that, but she... Jennifer Robertson writes with a prose style that's comparable, you know, to, to some of my favorites like Tad Williams, Pat Rothfuss, you know, all, all of these guys that just write beautiful prose. You can tell that this novel was her baby, that she really put everything into it that she had, storytelling-wise, characterization-wise, plot-wise, and especially prose-wise. I think she ups her game in the prose in this, in the, in this, in this book. And the prose is dynamite in her other books, too. But, man, she really knocks it out of the park with The Lady of the Forest. You know, and speaking of Robin of Sherwood and Lady of the Forest, in my own novels, The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, I pay homage in very subtle ways to this series. So if you are familiar with this series in, at all, and you pay close attention to what I've done here, you will see little hints and pieces and little nods of appreciation to this to this series, and, and I can tell it's it's also in and it's also in here. I, I I would guarantee you that Miss Robertson Robertson is familiar with this also. So what is the book about? As you can tell, I love it. As you can tell, this is going to be a fantastic review of one of my. Hey, I, I already told you it's the best Robin Hood book ever written. It opens with a prologue made Marion is being held captive by the Sheriff of Nottingham. He's, he's, he wants her land. He wants her to either marry me, give me the land, this, that, and the other. That's kind of the opening of the prologue. And then we jump back in chapter one. We jump back in time to when Robin of Loxley returns from the Crusades. Um, 
One of the differences in this story, as opposed to most other Robin Hood stories, is in most Robin Hood stories, Robin of Loxley ter returns from the Crusades and he's got his Saracen friend with him. Well, there is no Saracen friend here. Um, but, he'd come, but he does return with serious post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, he's got PTSD from the get-go, and you can tell that this Robin of Loxley is a dark and brooding and disturbed dude when he shows up. And that's one of the twists on the Robin Hood story that Jennifer Robertson incorporates that I loved. I loved it just because right from the beginning, we know Skay ain't right in the head. This guy has seen some stuff during the Crusades, and he is disturbed. Now, his father decides to throw a big party for his return. And so all the characters that we are kind of invited to this party, you know, Maid Marian, the Sheriff of Nottingham, Guy of Gisborne, the Sheriff of Nottingham's daughter, Eleanor, who's just evil. And the Sheriff of Nottingham is, a, is um, William de Lacey. Then there's Guy of Gisborne, his sort of second-hand man. And then there's his daughter, Eleanor, and they're just all conniving. I mean, those three are the three most conniving, evil, evil people in fantasy literature i'd bar none i mean those guys just are juicy dripping with villainy type villains i love them and then we've got robin of loxley's um father who's he's kind of happy that his son's returned alive but he's also disappointed that his son has returned as this brooding sort of jerk you know and he's and so his father just immediately starts treating him poorly which leads Robin of Loxley to be like, man, is this really, I've seen war, I've seen some stuff, I don't need this crap. I don't need this, you know, I don't need my father being a douche, I don't need the Sheriff of Nottingham trying to set me up with his daughter because his daughter's just a piece of crap. And he's like, I don't need all of this. And this is kind of what leads Robin into doing his Robin Hood shtick, right? You know, and then we've got all the great characters, too. We've got all the great characters that come with. So Robin leaves. Well, first of all, and not really a plot spoiler because it happens pretty early on in the book, is that um, William Scathlock, who is actually Will Scarlet, is kind of a bad outlaw. And uh, he sort of kidnaps Maid Marian for his own ends and takes her off into the woods. And that's where into the, into the Sherwood Forest, right? And then everybody goes chasing them off into the Sherwood Forest. But that's where Robin meets um, Little John, you know, and there's that typical, there's that famous scene of Little John and Robin with the pole staffs fighting on the log over the river. And then, and then they meet Much the Miller's son. Well, Much the Mill Miller's son is in it from the beginning. So is Alan Adale. Like, there's some great, I mean, all of the great people in Robin's, in Robin's, uh, you know, band of merry men. But let me get. They are not a band of merry men. I mean, they don't like any, I mean, none of them like each other at all. They are all bad people, and that's the thing. It's kind of like a kind of grim tone to this merry crew of merry men. Is they don't like each other. Friar Tuck doesn't like. I mean, Little John doesn't like. William Scath, Will Scarlet is just a bad dude altogether. And much the Miller's son and Alan Adale and Robin Hood and Maid Marian. They all get together and they're just kind of like. It does. This is a dysfunctional group. Which is kind of cool, because you got to have the dysfunction to have the drama. I mean, they're all outlaws, they're all dangerous, and we get to the Robin Hood story, you know, where they're, you know, where they do their Robin Hood hijinks and all that stuff. It's just, it's so cool. It's just such a cool book. It's such a cool retelling, told with such beautiful language, told by someone who's clearly researched the medieval time period, because all of that stuff is layered in perfectly into the narration there's no weird awkward info dumps it's just like beautifully beautifully told beautifully put together a story of just outlaws you know outlaws and how they all became outlaws i mean it's a thick book it's like it's like 800 pages you know this is the greatest retelling of the outlaw uh, outlaw robin hood story of all time and i know there's a sequel i have not read the sequel yet i just ordered a hard copy off of eBay because I've, I've, I've had this, I've had these things in my possession for 20 years, you know, and I've reread them a couple times and I've always known about the sequel. I just have not got it, but it will be in my next book haul, the sequel. Can't remember what it's called. This is Lady of the Forest. I can't remember what the sequel is called, but it'll show up in my next book haul video because it's coming in the mail right now and, uh, looking forward to it. I give this I give this, I mean, 
It's my favorite Jennifer Robertson book, and I've got all of her stuff. Minus the Caravans series. She did write a series of books called The Caravans. I do not have that. But I've got her Chesu Lee, her Sundancer. All great series, great series. You should all get them. Oh, but man, this is her best book by far, Lady of the Forest. 20 thumbs up, if I had 20 thumbs. Let's give it a 10 out of 10, because it's dynamite. 